Hello friends, welcome back. Now we are going to start chapter number 7, Wonders of Light, part 2. Actually, according to me, this chapter should have been taken before the mirrors and lenses chapter, that is chapter number 6. Anyway, in chapter number 6, we have already seen the reflection of the light. Okay, that means whenever the non-transparent reflective surface is there, and a light incident on it, it reflects. Wherever in case of lenses, the light passes through it and convergence or divergence happens. Now, let us see what is this phenomena? Why the light changes its direction? Now, whenever I say the ray, you should take it as a ray of light. Okay? Now, you might have seen something that whenever you put one coin, one rupee coin into the glass full of water, then it appears slightly bigger. Okay. Whenever one, suppose one glass is there and it is filled with the water and if you insert a pencil here like this, what happens? Up to here from the water level this part, the down part, the part which is submerged in the water will look slightly tilted. Okay? Do this experiment at your home. This part will be slightly tilted, this side or this side, but it will be slightly tilted. Similarly, if you put one ball, again you will see the difference the part which is not submerged in the water and part which is submerged in the water. Now why all these things happens? You know that whenever the light travels, whenever we watch something on the earth nearby distance or a little bit longer distance, what happens? The light comes directly into our eyes, right? But the medium through which that light is passing is fairly constant. Isn't it? That means the density of the medium is fairly constant. But now consider one situation. If I put one thick glass slab in front of my eyes, what will happen? First, the light rays through air will enter the glass slab. Okay. Now from this side they will exit and then will enter into my eyes. What will happen now? Though this glass is transparent, the density of the medium has now changed, right? An air is a thin medium, whereas the glass slab is a thick medium. That means the density of the medium is changed. And whenever the density of the medium changes, or in other words, I can say whenever the light passes through one medium to another medium or whenever the light changes, the path of light changes the medium, the path of the rays deviates, changes. This phenomena is called as the refraction of the light. Mind well, this is not reflection, this is refraction of the light. In lenses also, the refraction takes place because through air, light rays are coming, they are entering into the thicker medium of the lens and so the refraction, it deviates from its path. Till now if they are traveling in this way, after the path, after changing the medium, it will deviate, light with some angle it will deviate. What that angle is called, we will see later. But this is called the refraction of the light. We can do one experiment to see the refraction of the light and the path of the light. Okay? This is a very simple experiment. Okay? What I am doing? I am taking a plain paper. Mind well, this is the top view of an experiment. I have put one glass slab. I need four pins. Okay? I will put 
pin number one here and pin number two here or I can say A and B. Two pins are there. For example, if glass slab, if the paper is like this and glass slab is like this, I will put two pins here, this side. Now from this side, from this side, I will move my eyes or I will shift myself in such a way that I will see both the pins aligning each other. That means both the pins will coincide, I will see through the glass slab, both the pins will coincide and I will see only single pin. Okay, is it clear? So I am watching from this side and I will mark one pin C in such a way that A, B and C all three will align, they will coincide each other and I will see a single pin. Now again I have to put one more pin, pin D in such a way that all these four pins will be in one line. I should able to see only one pin. There are two pins but from this side I will see only one pin. Okay. Now remove the glass slab, just mark the glass slab with your pen or pencil and now we are going to mark the rays. When you mark the rays, the path of the rays, what you will see? The rays are coming from here and rays are exiting here and here you will see some deviation. You will see the figure something like this. Actually the path of the light is this. So it should go straight line go in straight line but it never happens because this is air and this is glass. The medium is changing for the light rays. The light rays are traveling from thinner medium to thicker medium. Now if we draw normals at the point of entry and point of exit what you will see? This is angle of incident I and this is R. This R is also called as the angle of refraction. Now can, can you observe one point? Now this light rays now from denser medium again it is coming out to lighter medium. Right now at this point now this will be your I and this will be your R. I is the angle of incident and R is the angle of refraction. Now when you do this activity or experiment manually you will see that whenever the light rays passes from the thinner medium to thicker medium what happens? This is the normal the angle is less. It is going towards the normal but whenever from thicker medium to thinner medium the light process from thicker medium to thinner medium what happens? It go away from the normal. Is this clear? Very simple. Angle of whenever thinner to thicker angle of incidence is always greater than the angle of refraction and here the angle of incidence is less than the angle of refraction. So what are the laws of refraction? The first law states that the incidence ray and refracted ray are always on the opposite side of the normal. Incidence ray and refracted ray are on opposite sides of normal at the point of incidence means at this point this point the normal should be drawn okay at point of incidence and the second law states that 
for the given pair of medium that means here air and glass are there for the given pair of medium the sign of incidence angle the ratio of sign of incidence angle to the sign of angle of refraction is always constant that is sin i upon sin r is constant where i is angle of incidence and r is angle of refraction okay so this is always constant and this constant is called as refractive index this constant is called as refractive index refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium and it is also denoted by letter nature okay so take into consideration all these two laws laws are very simple what is the refraction first of all it is the change in the path of light rays whenever the medium is changed okay what is angle of incidence at the point of changing the medium at the point of intersection of changing the medium if you take a normal the angle this angle is called as the angle of incidence whereas this angle is called the refracted ray will be always opposite side of the normal and mind well incident ray refracted ray and normal will always be in the same plane so this will be angle of incidence this is angle of refraction and sin of i to the sin of r this ratio is constant for the given pair of media and which is called as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Now in your book some refractive index of different transparent or semi transparent material are given. Okay. Now it is generally assumed in the practical that the speed of light in air and in vacuum are approximately same. So whenever your first medium whenever you have to find the refractive index suppose the refractive index of glass is given around 1.52 now this refractive index is always re with respect to the air or vacuum now whenever the first medium is vacuum it is called as absolute refractive index It will be called as absolute refractive index but generally the speed of light in air and vacuum is almost same nearby same so absolute refractive index is the refractive index of a particular material or particular medium with respect to the vacuum so different refractive indexes indices are given in your book one table is given now suppose this incidence ray is here the light is traveling in the air that is the first medium with the velocity v1 and in the denser medium it is traveling with the velocity v2 from the velocity from the magnitude of the velocity also we can find a refractive index of that particular medium and that can be given as that refractive index that is nita will be given as v1 upon v2 so the refractive index can be given as velocity of the light in the first medium to the ratio to the second medium okay and here it is generally written as 1 and 2 that is the refractive index of the medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Now in this case it is air the medium 1 is air 
okay so whenever the air or vacuum is there you need not write anything here you can simply write n2 that means this is the refractive index of medium 2 and definitely this will be called as absolute refractive index whenever nothing is given you have to consider it is an air or vacuum and then it will be called as refractive index or absolute refractive index otherwise you can write 1 and 2 doesn't matter so now what will be the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 very simple if I want to find a refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 I can write V2 upon V1 so the magnitude of this velocity to this velocity that is the velocity of refracted ray to the velocity of incident ray so I can find a refractive index of that particular medium okay now you can see that whenever whenever the light passes from thinner medium to thicker medium denser medium the this angle R or this refracted ray is bending towards the normal that means I is always greater than R and whenever it is passes from dense medium to lighter medium it goes away from the normal so that the here the I is lesser than R or R is greater than I okay now here angle of incidence is there now here it has become the refraction and ultimately you will get the this path with your visual experiment or activity in that case and whenever this thing happens we will say that the refractive index of this medium if that refracted ray is bending towards the normal I will say that the refractive index of this medium is greater than the refractive index of this medium not necessary always air is here not necessary at all because air is the first medium here whereas the glass is the first medium here from glass to air air to glass glass to air so the first pair is air and glass the second pair is glass and air and since it is going away from the normal I will say that refractive index of the second medium is less than the refractive index of the first medium so this is how the refractive indices are compared now we will consider one more case where there is no angle of deviation that means the incidence angle is zero that means if if this is the normal and your incidence ray is absolutely coincident that means the angle of incidence is zero i is equal to zero in that what will happen no deviation will take place no deviation will take place and light will pass through as it is even the angle of refraction will also be equal to zero so in case of the light entering perpendicular to that particular medium generally it never happens rarely it happens in actual but for experimental purpose we can consider that the line is passing or changing the medium absolutely perpendicular to the medium in that case angle of incidence is zero and angle of refraction is also zero and hence there will be no deviation at all deviation of light will not take place so here we finish the refractive index the refraction what is sin r what is sin i what is nita what do you mean by absolute refractive index and the law of refraction so let us move to next topic that is how this refractive index affect our eyesight or how this refractive index create illusion in our day-to-day -day life let us go to second topic thank you